Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I can't express my gratitude and happiness. This is about impact. This is about being innovative, being multicultural, being passionate, being attuned, being collaborative, and being tenacious. 53% of world population have been marginalized, sidelined, and not given the equality, not only in terms of numerical equality, but in terms of participation, in terms of equality in decision makings, in terms of equality in structuring the, the future of humanity. Thank you, Janet and Constance, and welcome to the New York Times. A lot of times we sit on top and we are presidents and we are entrepreneurs and we don't know what is going on on the front lines. You cannot run a company or an organization if you don't know what every department is doing. And that goes right down to the person who brings somebody at the service desk when they walk into the door. I think the conversation and the framework that needs to be addressed is having the willingness to ask for what you want. There are a number of women who I spoke to tonight who all said, well, I'm going to do this in two years, three years, four years. Ladies, the doors are open. They are open. And the universe asks us to step through the door and see what's on the other side. If you choose not to step through the door, do it because you have another reason not to do it. I come from a culture where the parents have only ever said there were three legitimate careers, which was doctor, lawyer, engineer, and that was pretty much it. And there's no shame in saying that my identity is not entrenched in X. I'm actually exploring something else, and I'm okay with the fact that I'm still a little bit on shaky ground. So my point being, or my takeaway being, for the first time there's that kitchen sink, as somebody said, somewhere along the way, of support that we can actually refer to. And that's how you grow. In addition to that, you all know Sarah Blakely. Spanx, who doesn't, right? I want to remind you that Sarah Blakely, if you didn't know it, was a Xerox salesman who believed in an idea of pantyhose that held your tummy and your butt in, and it is now a billion dollar company. So the thing that I think is important is that we are innovators, all of us in this room. Do not let fear stop you from moving ahead with your ideas. So, here's the deal. Um, how women can take advantage of this, it, this moment in time, is to be willing to embrace our power, to be willing to embrace it fully, to walk with intention, to have the courage to choose power over fear, and to choose power over any reluctance to, to move forward. And, and instead of transforming women's leadership, I think our task is for women's leadership to embrace our power and transform the world. Just for a moment, imagine if every single woman on this planet had the freedoms that we had, had the right to an education, had the right to be free from violence, um, had a right for an employment and to be economically empowered. Imagine what this world would be like. This would be an amazing planet, and I really do believe that together we are all going to do that, and we're going to make a difference. And I thank Janet so much for bringing us all together to have this conversation. Thank you. It's obviously the inter interconnectedness that we have. I mean, imagine what things were like in the dark ages, you know, 10 years ago. Right? <laughs> you'd, you'd have to write a letter, you'd have to wait, but we are all publishers now. We all have the opportunity to, to craft our own story. 
to use the internet and the social tools that are out there. So being connected, being educated about other cultures, about how other people are living, is really important. We need to sort of step out of our comfort zone. And we've been taking care of a family and not taking care of ourselves very well. But that's another story. Um, but now we can actually work out, take advantage of the opportunities that we have, and learn about those other cultures. You know, America, just let's remember, America is a country of immigrants. You know, and a lot of people, they still have accent. And, for example, I have Russian accent, and I'm proud of it. I don't want to be shy. Yes, I have Russian accent, but you can understand me. And this is the very important thing. You can understand me that you want to work with me, that you want to work with Russian women who live and work here. Women across cultures are often told, you know, don't be emotional, set the emotion aside. And we believe that. We somehow believe that we are supposed to, regardless of what culture we come from, be less emotional more like a man. Well, okay, I can only think of four letter words to come out of my mouth. We don't often think of this, but if, if you pause for a moment, you'll recognize that you have an internal dialogue. It's chattering away 24 7. And you have to, you could ask yourself is that internal dialogue one that is supportive, encouraging? Is it disciplined and strategic and bold and courageous when it needs to be? Thank mm -hmm. you.